Welcome to this LEX18 Digital Conversation. I'm Dia Davidson. Across the world today, September 14th, people are taking time to pause and practice peace in the mist. It's called the Unity World Day of Prayer. Joining us to talk about it is Reverend Richard Gaines. He's the senior pastor of Consolidated Baptist Church here in Lexington. Pastor, welcome. Good afternoon to you, Dia. Prayer. For some of us, it's the essential part of life. For others, it's a new, foreign idea. But today, we're celebrating prayer and collectively praying for peace. Mm -hmm. Why do you think prayer is so important, and why is it an important part of your life? Well, in, in simple language, I hear people say, and I've heard others, older saints, say that uh, prayer changes things. Then others come along and modify that statement and take it to this level that it may not change things, but it'll change you, or the person who's praying. But when I think about prayer and, and the purpose of it, you know, our communication with God and hearing what God has to say about us, as one seeks direction for his or her life, prayer is the avenue they take to get there. But so often people have said, well, how do you start? Mm -hmm. We know the model prayer that Christ left, mm -hmm. but there are some people who don't know what the model prayer is or even where to find it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So how do you start? Well, I think one must just start within themselves mm -hmm. rather than trying to pray, sound like, act like, do like someone else that we respect, mm -hmm. that we believe has what we call a good prayer life. Uh, I think we have to maintain our own sensitivities to who we are as people because prayer is just communication with God. Whatever I want to say, uh, and especially but more so what I want, I need to hear God saying to me so I don't have to pray like Dia. Right to be effective, and Dia doesn't have to pray like Richard to be effective, but it's your personal relationship that you hold with God and that I hold with him myself as individuals. When do you think is a good idea for people to start teaching their children even to, to pray? Oh, I, that's an easy one for me. The, the sooner the better. Right. Children learn more by what they observe than what we tell them. So if they see us as parents or older adults praying, they'll tend to do what we do. And so we, we, we're teaching even when we're not aware that we're teaching. So the sooner the better. Don't wait until they're 5, 10, 12. But even as little children, it may start with just blessing of the food right. when you're a child or um, Jesus loves me or right. you know, praying for one another. All those instances are cases where our children can observe and then learn how to pray themselves. And like you said, it's a conversation, isn't it, with our Heavenly Father, almost like we would have mm -hmm. with an earthly parent, right? Absolutely. It is, it is just that. We're praying as you and I are talking. Uh, we can talk to our Heavenly Father in the same way. And we always say be specific, right? Yes. Um, we ought not put limitations on our prayers, mm -hmm. and we can be as specific as we want to be. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus knows what we have need of before we even ask. Mm -hmm. And so some person says, that, well, since he knows, why should I even mention it? Well, it's not so much that he would know, but that we realize in communicating to God our concerns and our needs and cares, we get to offload them on him and reminds us that we are dependent on him and not on ourselves. Isn't it also important to just sometimes just say thank you? Absolutely. Uh, Thanksgiving is a part of prayer mm -hmm. because if I'm never appreciative, even as, as a parent, uh, it does my heart good when, you know, my wife and I do something for my son, right. our son, mm -hmm. and he says thank you. That means a lot. Yeah. And it costs nothing to say thank you, but it endears one uh, to the person who has blessed them when they hear thank you. Indeed. Pastor, you lead a, a large congregation here in our city. Are you noticing more people are coming to the church seeking prayer, seeking help, seeking guidance, seeking a stronger commitment to God? I, I do so. I do believe that, Dia. Uh, statistical data will tell you that people are not coming to church and people are not as committed. Um, I tend to fall in a different sphere of thinking, a frame of mind, if you will. I think those that are committed are begin being more committed. And the more those committed persons do what they do, the better able we're then to attract those who may not be as committed or not committed at all. 
And so I don't think we can get so caught up in the numbers because if I read the scriptures correctly, there's going to be a separating of those who are righteous and those who are unrighteous. And so we must be found faithful and leave the results to our God. Indeed. But to come to church does not mean that we have to be perfect. Absolutely. It, isn't it more of a place of imperfection? Absolutely it is. If, if the church were for perfected people, there'd really be no need for the church. Right. Jesus says, I came for those who need a doctor, not those who are well. And all of us have done wrong. All of us have sinned. And so the church is a place we can come. It's more like a, a spiritual hospital. Right. Uh, one writer calls it a bow ship and not a cruise ship. <laughs> uh, so, you know, sometimes you get hurt, sure. even in church. Oh, sure. But it is the place we can come and be who we really are right. with no facades and trust that others will put their arms around us and love us through the difficulties and the challenges we face. And that sword, as they say with the Bible, the word cuts both ways from the pulpit all the way to the pew, all doesn't the it? All the way, all the way. People, though, sometimes say that they're, they're nervous about if they haven't been to church, people going to be judgmental, or, or mm -hmm. if it's their first time and they, they are feeling a calling or a drawing, mm -hmm. but yet they just can't make it across the threshold because they're afraid. What, what are your words to those individuals? Uh, come on, as you are, don't wait to get it right before you come, because if you do, you'll never come. To those inside the church, we, we encourage them to be found friendly, warm, and genuine, mm -hmm. so that when others come, they won't feel called out or marked out, or if there's something greater, greater wrong with them than with those already in the house. Uh, but to be transparent, because all of us have a past, all of us still struggle with something, no matter who we are, no matter how we present ourselves. And so we're all together trying to be better. And so just welcome them and make them feel welcome and not like they're an outcast. How are we making the church more appealing, if you will, or accessible, especially to our younger members? Well, that's a challenge, Dio. You know, culturally, um, you know, I'm about to turn 6 old in about 10 days. Well, <laughs> church today is very different for me, mm -hmm. as it relates to trying to reach uh, the millennials, sure. you know, that 18 to 35 crowd. Right. Uh, we didn't grow up with the technology that they did. Right. Uh, it just, it's amazing. I'm trying to get technologically caught up, but I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm more of the face-to-face -face for their Twitter and Instagram right. and all the other stuff, which cuts down on face-to-face -face conversation. And from my perspective, it is limited. But for them, that's how they communicate. Right. So my generation of church leaders has to be able to adapt to meet them where they are because years ago, the church could put out a sign and people would come. Now we've got to go meet them where they are right. and help to bring them and assist them in that transition from the world into the church. And that's the other part too. Um, when I was coming up, if we were going to read the Bible, it was a bound book. But yes. now we see young people and I guess it's something for the older saints to not yes. look and frown if they pull out their iPhones because Absolutely. typically the Bible is on there, right? Right. I had a conversation this morning with a young man who was disturbed by watching folk in church on Sunday morning pulling out their phones right. and their iPads. And I had to say to him in a loving way, I said, it used to upset me. But now I realize they have their Bible on there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're live tweeting mm -hmm. while you're preaching the sermon or teaching the lesson. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're checking you for facts as well. Really? Absolutely. It is not uncommon to leave the pulpit and persons meet you at the bottom of the steps and say, Pastor, I heard you say so-and-so. Would you explain that a bit further? Or even, I, didn't, I don't see it that way. Can you help me get to where you are? Wow, so that kind of rocks you back on your heels a little bit, doesn't it? The first time it yeah, did, yeah. but now I'm, I'm accustomed to it right. because I just see that as an information seeker. Right. They're saying, tell me more. And so I take it as an opportunity to share more about whatever I was attempting to talk about. But you do call yourself a preacher teacher. Yes. So you feel more connected on a one-on-one -on -one level, you're saying, with, with people on well, their, their spiritual world? Yeah, I, I enjoy the one-on-one -on -one discipleship right. kind of opportunities. Right. But I think I'm as effective, even more effective, in a teaching kind of environment versus the Sunday morning, because Sunday morning, there's not the opportunity for dialogue. Right. And I, 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 I do people, I like people, right. and so I like the dialogue of a teaching session 
uh, probably a bit more than even the Sunday morning presentation of the gospel. But that has to wear on your spirit. You're human. Well, so where do you replug in? How do you get rejuvenated and, and, and refortified in order to, to deal with everybody? A couple of ways. I, I, I read, I try to read a lot, meditate on the scriptures, but also listen to other people preach the gospel, be it whether it's live streaming somebody else's service or listen to CDs that I've acquired of the service. Uh, and just still in a way to pray because as my pastor said, Reverend Coleman in Louisville, mm -hmm. if we never pull away, we pull apart. Right. So I've got to pull away at times just to replenish my own soul that I might have something to give to those I'm seeking to share with. If you had some words of wisdom for young preachers mm -hmm. coming up, both male and female, what would it be? Be patient. Don't mm -hmm. rush it. Um, don't get jealous mm -hmm. of those that you quote unquote deem successful. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know their story. You don't know what they've been through to get to where they are. And many are not willing to pay the price to get there. But spend time patiently preparing oneself because I believe a call to ministry is a call to preparation. And the worst thing one can do is just run out there and, and jump in this spiritual battle and he or she not be prepared for what lies ahead. Because usually you're running away from the pulpit Absolutely. versus running to it. Absolutely. I, I didn't choose this. It chose me. Indeed. Indeed. On this World Day of Prayer, what's your prayer for Lexington, Kentucky, the United States, and the world? My prayer idea is simply this, that one, people might come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that they might get to know themselves and be comfortable with who they are, and ultimately realize that we're all in this thing together. Mm -hmm. The least, the, the, the best among us are only successful to the level of the least among us. That's right. And we need to see it as one organism rather than this group, that group, that group, black, white, and, and everything in between. Because ultimately, when he comes back, he's coming back for the church without spot or blemish. So unity among God's people, that's what I'm looking for. Indeed. Pastor Gaines, always good to see you. Likewise. And we thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Digital Conversation. Be sure to check out lax18.com and all of our social platforms for this and other digital conversations. Until next time, I'm Dia Davidson.